Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, sorry if my eye, eye line doesn't always line up with the camera, I'm going to be reading from a script because I've got a lot of information I'm trying to cram into a very small video here. Um, so please excuse this voiceover video. I originally shot a discovery style video where I flashed lots of different BIOSes to the uh, B450 Aorus M and I even used an EEPROM programmer to unbrick it again. Um, more on that in a separate video. However, in the last section of filming, when I realized why I was having such a bad time with this motherboard, the answer was so egregiously obvious that I couldn't justify posting a one hour video that had such a basic bitch conclusion. But I also couldn't bring myself to go and reshoot the entire thing either after I'd spent three days on the original shoot and then put the Game Max PC all back together again. So here we are. Past all of that, this video is my final thoughts and corrections on the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M. So the recap is, while I was reviewing this board, I performed a BIOS update using an A8 9600 CPU. Because of the red text instructions on the Gigabyte website, I attempted to flash version F32 before the latest, which at the time was version F42. The Gigabyte website had a broken link or a misnamed file, and despite QFlash telling me that I was flashing F32, I actually ended up on F40. This caused me confusion because I knew that F32 wouldn't support my Ryzen 3600, so I spent a lot of time trying to recover the board before I threw in the 3600 as a last, last ditch attempt, which got it working. But the board was a complete mess, because although F40 is supposed to support Ryzen 3000, it's unstable as hell and basically unusable with Ryzen 3000. More on that in a minute. Uh, so in desperation, I swapped over the BIOS chips, hoping that the backup BIOS would be stable. And by pure fluke, it was stable enough for me to flash up to F41, which put the board into a stable condition with the 3600. So since doing the review, this board has been perfectly functional and I've used it for loads of hardware testing. However, it has two standing issues. A, it won't run its RAM at 3400 MHz unless I dial in custom timings, uh, although 3200 MHz is fine. And B, the BIOS resets if I unplug it from the wall. And C, post times and general just BIOS configuration stuff feels sluggish and just... The board doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel confident at all. So the first thing I did when I was making this video was I reflowed the solder joints on the BIOS chips and immediately that fixed the BIOS resetting issue. So that problem stemmed from the previous repair video and was totally my fault. That's all fixed now. Um, I also got word in the comments that BIOS version F50A was out, so I flashed my board up to F50A and I can report that it immediately feels a lot better. Uh, the slow post times and other general weirdness and lack of confidence that I was getting from the board is gone and it's completely restored my confidence in the board as a whole, so F50A is an absolute winner. Um, running RAM at 3400 still isn't perfect, it's slightly better, but slightly better isn't fixed. So I'd still suggest either underclocking your RAM down to like 3200 um, or bashing custom set, custom timings. Uh, check my video that I did recently on XMP to see how you can do that. Alright, so this is where I uncovered my mistake and the video kind of fell apart. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I use an A8 9600 CPU to flash AM4 motherboards. The A8 is an ancient CPU based on the old excavator architecture. That's like the FX series kind of deal. Uh, and normally that's a good thing for flashing because it means the chip will basically work in anything. However, a BIOS chip only has so much space on it, and in order to make room for new CPU libraries like Ryzen 3000, the older ones get dropped. This means that lately I've been doing BIOS flashes where my A8 is incompatible after the flash. But this isn't an issue because then I drop in a Ryzen 3000 and I'm laughing. 
However, the B450 Aorus M is different to other boards I've worked with in that it requires sequential updates. If you're running an early BIOS like F1 to F5, you have to update to version F30 or F32 before you can go up to F40 or higher where Ryzen 3000 support comes in. And that's the catch because excavator chips like my A8 are dropped at F30, meaning that there's a valley of death where the board appears to be bricked. Ironically, when Gigabyte served me a broken BIOS download, that wasn't the version I intended, they actually saved me from this because had I actually flashed F32 like I planned in the previous video, I'd have ended up with an incompatible CPU and I probably would have assumed that the board was cactus. Uh, I should have known this. Uh, I should have been checking the CPU support list and that's why I've scrapped the original video. Uh, I just assumed that the same old AM4 CPU that I flashed dozens of boards with would be fine. So now for the straight answer. To safely flash the B450 or SM up to the stable F50A BIOS, you need a Ryzen 1000 or 2000 CPU. You put one of those in, flash it to F30, then flash it to F50A, and then you put in your Ryzen 3000. Bang, that's it, you're done, you'll be fine. The thing is, is that people generally don't have good CPUs like a, like a Ryzen 1000 or 2000 just lying around. The point of my A8 9600 is that it's dirt cheap and expendable. I originally bought it on eBay for like 40 quid. And for a computer shop like mine, where I'm flashing a lot of motherboards with one CPU, 40 quid, that's fine. You know, that's the investment cost for a tool. So obviously I need an updated tool. So I bought an Athlon 200 GE, which is 40 pounds brand new, and it's based on the Zen family. So it's got the same compatibility as a Ryzen. But this CPU isn't supported until F30. So why did I buy a newer chip instead of just buying an old 1200G or something like that? The answer to that is future proofing. Next year, there's probably going to be a Ryzen 4000 series and the cycle will begin anew. And I suspect that the Ryzen 1000 series will be next on the support chopping block. I'm not sure about that, but it might be. So I don't want to buy a Ryzen 1000 as my flashing CPU and end up in this exact same boat this time next year. Um, so there's also no point in me selling my A8 because it's an ancient CPU that no one wants. So even though I might have to do two CPU changes to fully flash a board that requires sequential updates like this one, it does mean that I won't get caught with my pants down like I did with this motherboard. Kind of, uh, but not entirely. Uh, it was enough of my fault that I'm making this correctional video. Um, it, however, it also bears mention that at the time of reviewing the board, Gigabyte had broken BIOSes on their downloads page, and even today, BIOS version F40 claims to be Ryzen 3000 compatible, but it really, really isn't. And like, even now, I'm trying to look up the uh, CPU compatibility chart for this uh, CPU, and the Gigabyte website is breaking on me. So um, it's as much my fault as it is Gigabyte's. However, uh, version F50A is good enough, uh, so get your boards flashed up to 50A and you will be fine. So, sorry for the long waffle video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time, hopefully with a more interesting video about my USB EEPROM programmer that I was learning how to use while researching this video. So, thank you very much, see you all next time. Bye for now.